You are now listening to the Highlight Real Builder for Authors, the Going North Podcast. I'm your host, certified self leadership trainer and author of the best selling book, Stay the Course, Dom Brightman. And you're going to be getting some goodies today from the guest that's up next. Today on the Highlight Reel Builder for authors known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous is the Going North podcast. We're back at you again with part two, round two, sooner than earlier because it's the five-year anniversary of the show where we've interviewed over 600 super special awesome humans who put pen to paper and join the business of immortality. And it's one of those rare occasions where someone gets to come back for round two a little sooner than later because they have a whole bunch of wisdom indeed you know her you love her and she loves the planet earth let's give it up for the wonderful award-winning eco entrepreneur and a powerful voice for nature who's of nature the one and only dm herself the delightful and magnificent donna maltz how you doing today mama donna aloha dom oh and everyone out there who's listening i am so honored to be here and be able to share my love the wisdom I gained from being a voice for nature and my love of life and interconnecting with incredible people like Dom and brings out the best in all of us. So I am really excited to be here and talk with y'all about the soul to soul principles and living like the future matters. So Dom, what do you think? Should we get started? Oh, yeah, that's right. Folks got soil and they got soul, so might as well figure out how to combine both, right? <laughs> right? We are soil. We are soul, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right. We are soil. Actually, how'd you discover these principles anyway? Was it a digital download? Did it just appear to you in your sleep? You wrote it down before they disappeared when you woke up? Like, how'd, how'd they come to you? You know, that is so funny that you said digital download. Oh, my God. You know, when these came to me, there wasn't even a digital world happening. There were no, uh, well, maybe there were those big clunky computers out, but uh, nobody had a cell phone or uh, iPhone, a iMac, whatever Android you're carrying in your pocket. Um, Those, there was no digital download. And, And that's why... I'm, I'm so excited to be here and uh, it's kind of like books, right? Books are beautiful. We don't have to digitally download them. Books are still around that we can relate to them. But my digital download or my download came from spending a lot of time in nature, listening to the birds and the winds and the ocean and feeling the wind wrestling through my hair and the squirrels scampering and bears in the woods and moose and deer. I lived in um, Alaska for a long time, since 1982. Now I live in Hawaii. But I, I've been immersed in nature really since, the, uh, since 1980, when I had my first organic farm. And, you know, that's when I got my hands in the soil, Dom. I was in my early 20s. And my farm was surrounded by woods and the interconnection, the whole, that that being barefoot in the field, eating raw ears of corn uh, right off the stalk and seeing cucumbers on vines growing up corn stalks and squash and watching this all happen and unfold. I was a suburb girl from New Jersey, right? And supposedly the Garden State. And it just um, blew my mind just to see something grow, right? Something grow out of the soil like that. And it penetrated my soul so deep to watch a cardinal swoop down and get that earthworm to see a bee buzzing around the sunflowers and gathering pollen 
for our beehives. It just, um, it's something, if you haven't experienced, you don't know, you don't have the experience. So I, I encourage everyone who has the opportunity, let alone just take your shoes off, walk barefoot, grounded, get your soul, your soles or your feet connected to your soul or your heart. Understand where we come from. We are made up of all the elements of the earth. We are one with the earth to think that we, we are animals, Dom. <laughs> so soul to soul came in through the soles of my feet, not through the digital download. And I'm here to inspire and encourage everyone to have, take the chance the, while the opportunity is still there, while there is still soil to walk on. And I remember the day when I stopped calling soil dirt, right? Everybody calls it, oh, you're so dirty. <laughs> you're, you're filthy, you're dirty. Get that dirt out of the house. Those are healthy microorganisms that can help us not get sick. They're the organisms that strengthen the, our microbiome. This is soil. This is where the life of all that we eat comes from, the soil. Whether you're eating animals or plants, they're eating everything that's coming from the soil, the billions and trillions of microorganisms that you can hold in one hand full of that precious soil is life itself. And when you have that soul connection, when you can drench that in and realize this, then you take care of yourself and the Mother Earth. If we don't, well, hell, we might as well just live on a dirt and you know dirt is dead soil. And when things are dead, you can't live. And we're killing, killing soil right now. There's only maybe 55, 60 years of farmable soil left. And if it were up to me, I don't wanna eat food made in the laboratory that you can't even consider food. I mean, I love food. These are my star fruits, right? These are from my farm here. You know, star fruits, they're the <laughs> stars in my eyes, right? Pineapple grown right in my yard. Mm. Everybody can put a parsley plant in their home or a basil plant in their home, not only to sequester soil, not only to complement your plate, but to remind us from the soil to the soul, we are one with the Pachamama. I know that was kind of a long answer, but I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, uh, <laughs> did I, did I get... It goes with the territory. It goes with the territory. Besides, with all that love of farming, it, that actually paid off, because if I'm not mistaken, you actually opened a bakery while you were in Alaska. That was the first natural foods bakery. So how are you able to combine, I guess, your love of nature with business? Because a lot of folks are doing that nowadays, and they may need some wisdom from someone who's done it decades ahead of time. Oh, good. Uh, that is a good question, Tom. I love that. I could talk about that for a long time. Do we have a couple hours? <laughs> Here's the thing. In my, <laughs> in my book, you know, because we're talking about books, living. What, this is one of my books, Living Like the Future Matters. You notice the subtitle is The Evolution of a Soul-to-Soul -Soul Entrepreneur. And it's written in six evolutionary periods and 13 cycles, not chapters, representing the cycles of a tree from seed to sapling to canopy to a wise old forest of trees. And I'm constantly using um, soil and to soul and the metaphors of nature, um, which crystallize my success for being an eco entrepreneur, a serial eco entrepreneur. I've had several soil to soul businesses, and now I teach people how to get into soil to soul businesses and be successful, not just for themselves, but to redefine success and wealth health is your greatest wealth but my restaurant um 
what it did when I when I started it in 1982, I was 25 years old and I had been farming for years since I was 20. And I really understood that relationship. And I really understood that every time I'd go out to eat that back then, you know, fast food restaurants were going up faster than farms were being planted. Actually, farms are going, the small family farms were going out twice as fast as fast food restaurants were being constructed on every corner in major cities and small towns across America, and then even starting to infiltrate overseas by the late 80s. And it was um, then that I realized I had an opportunity because I knew how to make really good food. I understood how food grew that my bakery and my restaurant first and foremost was a place to educate about people for food for people on the planet it was a place to educate people about the soil to soul mentality to understand where their source of their food came from and then i wrote a really cool kids book which i don't know if you can see it up there but it's yummy wilderness wonders for kids and adults it's a recipe cookbook talking about how everything we eat and every single food choice we make affects all living things. And in order for us to have bir birds and moose and bears and walruses and whales and everything from the tiniest microorganism to the largest mammal, that what we do one choice at a time makes a difference on the planet. And so I had these table tents and on my menus, it was like a little book almost reading about uh, where people could get educated, like how many how many coffee cups, how many times around the world styrofoam coffee cups would go. We never had styrofoam in our restaurant. Um, I talked about the toxicity of all these plastics right on the table tents. You know, you know the six plex table tents. You know, you go in a restaurant, you go around, you read it. Well, by the time their food came around, they 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 knew that they were eating in a place that cared about food for people on the planet. They knew that they could trust that. They made a good choice coming to this restaurant when they couldn't get bacon. They understood why, unless we got organic, humanely raised bacon, because we did see, serve meat, but we taught, we emphasized a plant based diet. And, you know, back then, you know, you we, we had the cleanest food you could possibly eat. We were the Berkeley of Alaska. We were the, we were way far ahead of our of our our time and we got written up all over the place became very famous and very popular called the fresh sourdough express bakery and cafe in homer alaska and um i i was uh, uh, offered to franchise it that's a whole other story for another day and the, the stories in the book and i chose not to and i'm really glad i didn't at the time um we 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 stuck to our guns. We we did a lot of um, different kind of business. We traded a lot with people. Um, we helped a lot of people. Like being in business, you asked the question, you know, about the food, soul to soul, how it related to business. Um, business is all about soul. And when you're in the food business, any business really, it's all about the soil because everything comes from the soil. The clothes you wear you know, the, the petroleum products that come through the soil that are made from dead fossils and dinosaurs. And, you know, that's the thing, you turn the graves of anything, karma comes back to bite you. So we, we did a lot of talking about that in the restaurant, um, reducing um, our carbon footprint and our waste by not using a lot of plastics and styrofoams, et cetera. But the soulful part of it that was kind of going off tangent there was the way we treated our people. Nobody worked for me. And when I say we, my husband, I, I hired my husband in 1984. That's a great story that's in the book too. Um, we, uh, people worked with us. Nobody worked for us. They worked with us or we'd say, you know, maybe you should go get a job somewhere. This is a family, this is a team. This is a, a, you know, this is that soul part of any business, treating people with dignity and integrity. And everybody knows I never fired one person 
um, in 37 years of having my restaurant and multiple other businesses in between. I never fired anybody. I, I would reposition them because I would look at them in the eyes like I'm looking at you folks right now. And I'd ask them, what do you love? What do you want to do? You know, so many people are so lost even back then, even more now, just to have somebody ask you, what do you want? What, what would you like to do here? That's going to, that you're going to enjoy coming, coming here and being part of this. And, you know, they ended up either staying and becoming the head chefs and baker, not even going to culinary school, or or they just left with a lot of love and respect for me. And rather than me firing them and get your ass out of here attitude. It was just sometimes people just need to be heard. And business is a privilege and being a business owner is a privilege. And I think that one thing that we really lose to really, really understand is that a business owner that really cares about people and food for people on the planet or people in general, I mean, the responsibility of being a business owner is mega big. I can't even um, describe the, if if you don't own a business or you're thinking of running a business, the responsibility is kind of like um, as gigantic as being a parent. And if you want to be a successful parent or a business owner, it comes with really love and respect and honoring and, and caring. And that's that soul part of the business, right? The evolution of a soil to soul entrepreneur. So in addition to serving food for people on the planet, we serve the people, the customers who came in the door. It, most times people come in, they're, they're hungry. Most often they're hangry. <laughs> right hangry 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 we all know what that is and so i would just work with our staff and just say hey our job here is to elevate the vibration who wants to work in a toxic environment with toxic customers and if a toxic customer walked in because they do trust me no matter what business you're in you know you can smell them you can feel them <laughs> <laughs> right yeah <laughs> So um, we we just like our we had we had a goal. It was almost like it was almost like a game, you know. Hey, we're gonna bring these people. They're at a five. We're gonna bring them to a seven. No, a nine. No, a ten. You know, like it's like how can we do this? Like keeping our energy up and our love and our vibe. And um, we had strategies and techniques and things that we would do to make sure that would happen. And then hence the soul to soul principles came out of all these experiences with businesses and my bit my with my all my bit different businesses and all the different people I worked with. And it constantly like any time I was having a rough time or because I did too, you know, not every employee is the perfect per- person. They're your biggest asses or your greatest asset. <laughs> right? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) So I'm telling you what, we had plenty of asses that we turned into assets. (laughs) And and that's a goal for all of us, just no matter whether you own a business or not. You know, we 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 you know we can we can turn this thing around. Oftentimes it just comes with a smile and an open heart and um, getting beyond the ego. Why are we here, folks? What are we doing with our lives, right? So, uh, so would you yeah. consider that the blooming part of your soul to soul principles, like taking them from basically a budding ass to making them bloom into an asset? <laughs> right? Isn't that a great analogy? Right? Oh, I love that. I can see it growing. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah. I mean, during. During the early 80s into the 90s is like things crystallized for me, you know, by 1992, I had written my first kids book and then I went national with the first organic cocoa and chocolate syrup in the nation called Alaska and I was just just this young hippie girl from Homer, Alaska at the time, gone rogue from New Jersey to uh, Alaska. And, and I went, I lived in this town of like 24, 2,500 people. And I, I, I started this national company. And by then the principles were really crystallized because I really, uh, I was rock solid. 
And um, it wasn't until I wrote the book that I actually wrote them down, right? But I followed them and, and they were on my menu and they are in my literature, but they weren't like crystallized like they are now in the book. And if you want, I can take the time. If you think your audience would like, I could read them. They're not that long. Um, and I read them with zealous and, and excitement. So people might want to hear them. What do you think, Dom? Of course, I'm all ears, all 10,000 sets of ears already. <laughs> all right, I love it. Well, um, I would love to read this. I get so much pleasure out of reading them. And I hope all of you are listening. Um, I'd love you just to sit back and, you know, take take these in, right? It, it's um, it's good. And, and if you if you want, um, Dom, I'll give you these in a free download and you can um, send them out to all, all your listeners and even a free ebook if you'd like. So it's a big book, you guys. Um, so the soul to soul principles. I cultivated these guiding principles throughout my life. They inspire me to live like the future matters. And they have provided the foundation for this book, my career and my life. Together, they form a general blueprint of values that can help regenerate people and the planet itself. Number one, be part of the solution. With reverence, cultivate a life that prioritize, prioritizes restoring the earth and caring for oneself and others. Support endeavors that are focused on regenerative solutions, S-O-U-L, solutions. Be a mindful, active citizen, a soulful light in the world. Give more, take less, because what we appreciate, appreciate. Number two, health is your greatest wealth, reprioritizing success and wealth. A healthy body fosters a healthy mind, which layers the groundwork for a more vibrant world. Nourish everything from the soil to your soul. Respect, replenish, rejuvenate. Mm. Living in harmony with nature. The earth is our home. Honor and integrate the wisdom of the systems and cycles of nature into your life. Nature-based solutions hold the key to humanity's most challenging problems. A restorative connection to the earth is essential for our survival. Principle number four, know your truth. Who are you? What do you love to do? What is your purposeful why? <laughs> I'm asking the question giving you a minute think about it now celebrate life from the depth of your souls rejoice with others manifest your dreams and embody your highest potential love and accept yourself mm. because what we focus on grows principle number five mentors are essential dom and i mentor each other mm -mm, all the time not just here we love each other and he's a great mentor for me age doesn't is irrelevant. At any, at any age, have mentors and mentor others. The benefits received from intergenerational support are priceless. Knowledge fertilizes the mind to think and to create. Yes. Wisdom comes when we apply what we have learned. Be a mindful lifetime learner and reader. The past. History is no mystery. Reference the past to improve the future connect with your roots then compost what does not serve you and nourish what does forgiveness allows you to live in the present and to look forward to the future next principle is the present a gift receive it in the now invest your time and your energy into a purposeful passion cultivate love and compassion with gratitude because gratitude changes the attitude time is our most valuable currency so spend it wisely the future live like the future matters hmm i hold the keys in my hands in shifting our focus from the good of mankind or humankind to the good of life kind 
we can create an evolving paradigm and improve the quality of life for all. Resilient, we can adapt to the unknown. Last and not least, connection is sacred. Support and take part in creating a vibrant community and a local economy. Cultivate unity and reverence for all life in your community. Uni united, we bring value, we bring balance and diversity to our world. Our sacred yet vulnerable web of life counts on all of us as we depend on it. Together, we can strive to live like the future matters. So spit poet spit <laughs> oh yeah i hope you all like those and you know whatever principles that we hold right whether i mean some people read from the bible or some people hold true to the four agreements or um it's the principles that bring out kindness the principles that bring in love and joy for all life kind for all sentient beings even for the rocks the minerals that came really their life. It's our life. And we have been too focused on the digital downloads, Dom. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely can say that again. Definitely can say that again, indeed. And definitely some solid principles, some rock solid goodness indeed. And like there's like so many of them that definitely apply. Like I, I love the whole compost what doesn't serve you part as well like that it's so right. true because like it's kind of like the whole failure to success thing it's like you can't really have success without having at least setbacks that eventually become success when you evaluate them yeah yeah you know we're all gonna fall into the shitter excuse me uh, <laughs> different parts of our lives right i mean but shit's part of the natural thing i mean take that manure and you put it into your compost pile and you bring it to an anaerobic state when you throw in some carbon throw in a little hay a little dry leaves mix it in with that manure poop doo doo shit um whatever you want to call it it's like the principles whatever principles that are going to make things work right that are going to make things compost that are going to aerate it. It doesn't matter what you call it or what you follow, but if it's something that's following a, a set of principles or, or laws of nature, guidance that helps us all to be good people. And not everybody is as unfortunate as maybe you or I, or maybe people are more fortunate. So it's up to those of us who have lived, like I've been in the poop before, Dom. Um, I've had a, some really rough cycles in my life. But we rise above and we rise like a phoenix and we come out of it and we're always, if we're always looking to how we can improve, how we live like the future matters, how do, how, how can my story, my tragedy, my um, sadness, my hurt, um, what can I compost, what can I extract out of it to help something, someone or something else. I mean, you look at everything in nature, no matter what species of animal it is, no matter how big or small it is, they're all here to do one thing, really, to survive, propagate, move, to create a better world for the future generations. But so many people are stuck holding a bunch of baggage. <laughs> they're hoarding, hoarding their crap around. <laughs> right? If it doesn't serve you, compost it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about indeed. So my goodness, so speaking of compost, I'm pretty sure you've had some setbacks in life that actually turned into some wonderful manure to help you grow a giant metaphorical tree of success. So what would you consider your greatest failure that actually became your greatest success? You know, <laughs> so interesting. A couple things. My mom died when she was 50. And I was 27 and I just started my, my restaurant into it two years and it was cranking. My mother had come seen it twice before she died. And from New Jersey, she made the trip, even though she was really sick and stuff. It was so great. That story's in my book and it, it'll make you cry. It makes me cry thinking about it. <clears throat> anyway, one of the last things my mother said to me was, 
um, I asked her what she was going to do when she come, came back. Because she was coming back. My mother was awesome. I love my mom. You can see it in my eyes. You can feel it in my energy. And she looked at me, and she was all bundled up like she was 90 years old. And my mother was gorgeous. She was model material, beautiful. I look more like my dad. Anyway, <laughs> that's not true. I'm just trying a little comic relief. Well, it depends. Depends, depends what I'm, I'm wearing and what I'm doing. Anyway, my, my mom was amazing. And, and this was the most amazing thing she ever said to me. She said, Donna, I'm going to come back as a successful businesswoman. Yes, that's what I, I will do. And oh my God, right? She, my mother lived and still does vicariously through me. And to answer your question, that was such a huge pivotal moment and such a gift that my mother gave me. My mother's death and dying and sickness and illness and seeing her going on every single weird diet to stay beautiful, wearing all this disgusting chemical makeup and hair spraying herself every single day with these chemicals and, you know, just trending. I mean, you're, we're talking in the 70s and in the 80s when toxins were just cheaper than tap water and everybody was just you know the things that women were supposed to do to be trophy wives and so it instilled in me that health was my greatest wealth and if i was gonna be a successful woman and bring my mom to live vicariously through me then i damn well better be healthy i needed to serve healthy food i needed to um you know, make sure my mom could live on through me and, and just be rocking, having a good time. And um, so her death was almost like a sacrifice for me to make sure um, I did, I, I was healthy and did healthy things. And then, um, I mean, I became a fitness instructor the whole nine yards, and I was still making obscene brownies and all these crazy sh full of sugar, but organic sugar products at my bakery. And but we were and we we were only using butter and real maple syrup, and you know, no processed nothing. It was super clean, healthy, but you know, it still wasn't a hundred percent like vegan healthy food like that. Like, not as necessarily all that healthy, but um, packaged foods of the vegan style. I don't want to get down that rabbit hole right now. But um, thing too, after my mom died, I fell and I blew out my back and then I had a kid and then I blew out my knee and I gained all this weight when I was pregnant. I was in a lot of pain. And anyway, I crashed I, I, and, and, I, and, I, and I gave in and I let my mom down. I let myself down. I got to be 205 pounds. And this is all in my book. And I talk about addiction and being addiction to the American dream. And I was a workaholic and a foodaholic and a sugaraholic because I was in pain. And I know a lot of people are listening to this. You're in physical pain. You might be in mental pain. We just went through covid era that's never going to end it's an epidemic now people have long covid people are feel like shit excuse me we said it once we'll say it again and you know how how do we not like fall into this depth of despair and how do we get out of it and rise like a phoenix again so um yeah it, it took me falling really hard and if you want to read the whole story it's, it's in the book it's a great story um and I had pity party after pity party for about four years. Nobody attended any of those parties, not one person but me. And then finally I hit rock bottom, sat under a tree like Buddha, spanked myself all up. Had my, I asked myself, what would my seven-year-old at the time, my son was seven, what would my seven-year-old son think of me? How is he going to remember his mother like this? I was pathetic. And then all these leaves started flying. It was the fall and I'm in Alaska and it's getting cold out and, but I'm hot and angry and saying all kinds of stuff. And I was really in a bad way. And um, these leaves started falling off the tree. And I just felt my mother, the spirit of my mother swarming out around me like a hive of honeybees. And my mother just was like, 
just wasn't going to have it. So I turned things around, right? You know, that's that intergenerational stuff. But I mean, my mom, you know, she still hangs around. Sometimes she's a little annoying, but <laughs> never. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean? I mean, people out there don't believe in afterlife. Well, God, they, right? They should have, I think, in a chat with me, right? Um, yeah, so that was, that was, that was another, uh, you know, those, those two moments. And it's interesting that, you know, the person that I was attached to, the biblical cord, right, what happened to be it. She, she couldn't be at my wedding, at the birth of my son, um, all those special moments. So she uh-huh. just chooses to pop in in these other moments right when I need her. So anybody who's like just struggling with anything, know that there are people looking after you and, and, and you just got to believe, right? And so, you know, I went on from that, like doing all kinds of amazing other career things. Um, and uh, now I teach people starting a membership where I'm helping people to de-stress, to live more like the future matters. I'll be teaching culinary classes and one-on-one group, well, group, co- co- group classes and bringing in all these professionals talking about um, everything from death and dying to uh, living and living foods to oral health and, and interconnecting it to our physical health, all the things that I've learned that can save someone's life or make someone's life better. Um, like, you know, as well as I do, Dom, doing these shows, we meet incredible people. And um, they're the people we want to have conversations with, and they're the people I want to share with our inner tribe. Um, even above and beyond what I do on my my own show, A Dose of Positivity, which Dom actually was just on my show. If you haven't listened to the the replay, yeah, Dom, you have to let him get, let everybody know we had a great time. Everybody loved Dom when we have a live broad. I do a live broadcast, and you're all welcome to come on the live broadcast and we chat. And um, yeah, people, Dom, you you were so well received and so loved. So. Um, but anyway, you know, so so through all of the, these these things that we all we all go through, you know, when we flatline, we get bored, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, and we get bored. So, like, we're, we, if we dip a little, and 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 we 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 know how to recover from that, it, it doesn't mean hitting a, a bottle of gin or a, a box of Oreos or to go to the gambling casino. It means okay, I'm going to have some of that. And then tomorrow I'm going to have a little less of that and a little less and moderate. And then when, when we win an award and we're all the way up here and, and our adrenals are going and we're like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want it to get to our ego. We don't want our heads to blow up and going, I'm so great. You know, I'm up here and everything. I'm supposed to stay here. No, no, that's not good either. So we, 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 we want to just accept that we we got this award or whatever it is in our life or this somebody asks us to marry them and it's like that endorphin high right and we we, we embrace it but we, we realize that in order to have a healthy marriage or to maybe even win the next award or, or keep going and not die of a heart attack because there's too much out there happening um to keep us up here you know, we just, we, that little baseline, there's nothing wrong, wrong with it. As long as we, we do, we can do this instead of this. <laughs> That's right. Indeed. All the fluctuations, indeed, all that magical up and down zigzag line graph. Goodness, indeed. Definitely want to avoid that. So my goodness. So since your second round, we're coming down to a special question reserved for guests who pop back on for round two. And that is your call to give the final keynote address of your life. You get 90 minutes and your audience is all 6 billion people on earth at once. So their smartphones are literally locked into you. They can't escape. They have to tune into Mama Donna for 90 minutes. What would the main message of that keynote be? And what would the main points of that message entail? Live like... The future matters from the soil to the soul with each choice you make 
ask yourself, is this living like the future matters? And to remember that one bite at a time, one choice at a time, you matter, you make a difference. You want me to keep going for 90 minutes? I can. <laughs> I, 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 I hope I answered a question, right? <laughs> but I love your laugh. It's so contagious. You guys, please, everybody laugh like Dom. The world be a better place. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. Laugh is good for the soul. And you'll get more soil afterwards, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really true. We need to cultivate kindness, love, compassion. Unity and community builds our immunity. And right now, we need immunity like never before. And it's that soulful connection that we have, not just with each individual, but whether it's our dogs or our cats, the birds singing outside, the squirrel wrestling up a tree to get that last acorn before winter. Taking time to notice those simple things, those beautiful things in life that so many of us take for granted because we're in the digital download mindset. Look around, open your eyes, read Going North by Dom Brightmore. It's a great book if you haven't read it yet. (laughs) (laughs) And and you'll you'll find some really cool stuff in there. And the next, what's what's your second book now? I'm having a brain fart, your second book. Um, Oh yeah, stay the course. Stay, Stay the, the course. course. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Stay the course. And that's my, my, my second book is called Conscious Cures, Solutions to 21st Century Pandemics. So I would, I would share with everybody that being a solutionist is so much better than trying to be, solve a problem, right? So just for short-term gain, which is people look at a solution not as a solution how is that soulful connection going to benefit benefit future generations and all the creatures on the planet so i just want to say to everybody who's listening how much uh, it means to me to be here for round two with dom to be able to address all of you at this 90 minute uh I have 90 minutes to address you (laughs) in this auditorium full of people. I mean, I think that if I was really doing that, I would be, I would have AFib and my palms would be so sweaty (laughs) and I would just maybe pass out. So I'm really happy that I can do it this way in this small, (laughs) not all of us are meant to be on the, on the main stage. Um, This I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for, so many reasons for the for the the positive side of looking at what happened out of this pandemic and i want to say to everybody who's not focused on all the positive things that you can start focusing on everything that's positive you wouldn't maybe necessarily be listening to all of dom's wonderful interviews and and we wouldn't have necessarily met one another this is a really incredible time in our lives to look at things differently to make a shift in things that are shitty. I said it again. I mean, if something isn't working in your life right now, um, you're not living like the future matters if you stay in an abusive situation. And there's always a way out. There's always a door to open. There's always a hand to hold yours if you're willing to reach out for help. And I know when I, when I was down or problems were happening with me, I did, right? And um, now I got a sun shining around in my background all, everywhere. And, and Dom, I don't know if we have time for this, but I, I would love to take people around and, and, and show them outside. I think, did, I'm not sure if we did that on our last interview. Is there anything else you, you would like me to, to, to share with everybody? Or, um, because I sure, I sure appreciate this time that you've given me. Uh, I guess one more time for folks who need to keep in contact with you and all the stuff you're doing. What's the best way for folks to do just that? Oh, well, the best way um, would probably be to go to donnamaltz.com, D-O-N-N-A-M-A-L-T-Z.com. And from there, you can um, 
see get on our mailing list you, you'll see the dose of positivity on there you'll be able to see get on to our youtube channel and our podcast channel and all of our social channels you'll be able to um find everything on donamults.com so i really hope you'll follow us and um join the positivity movement um learn incredible ways to de-stress from some of the most experts on the planet who are stepping up um, to be part of this positivity movement. And we're just thrilled to invite you and have you along for this beautiful journey we call life. Oh, well, there you have it, folks. Head over to DonnaMaltz.com. Check out all of our wonderful wares indeed. And check out that Patreon page, too, for all the recipes. That's right, indeed. Mama Donna's got enough recipes to fill up a whole Bible, y'all. I'm telling you, that's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. So check it out like a library book, indeed, indeed. Well, any parting words before we go on a three-hour tour? <laughs> oh, a three-hour tour. I would love to do that. Yeah, parting words. Gosh, I thought I already did some parting words, but I think what I'm going to do, Dom, is I'm going to unplug and I'm going to do some parting scenery with you guys because I really want you to understand, say, a voice for nature and, and, and to see um, this um, amazing uh, place. I'm going to go out this way. I'm taking you through my my home on the big uh, on the big island and i want to leave you with some beauty there's a helicopter going over um there's some mighty big coconuts and pineapples and um this is some fresh uh turmeric from my yard can you see that don nice there we go and then we got a pineapple from the yard and and there's these beautiful papayas got seeds ready to go into the ground um and, uh, and uh, you know, to me, the final word is nature. Um, we've got beautiful things growing everywhere here, papayas and um, seeing, seeing the beautiful, beautiful things that nature has to offer us. Can you still hear me? I'm not losing you, am I, Dom? Don't worry. I'm still on earth. It's okay. All right. I just sometimes I, I lose you. Yeah, this is um, some spearmint growing here, some garlic chives. Um, Pineapples, can you see these little pineapples, Dom? Can I, am I on the pineapples? Woo! There we go, pineapple hair, ahoy. Pineapple hair, the beautiful peppers. Oh my gosh, you can see them, right? Sometimes I miss, so I want to make sure um, I'm not missing anything. Um, just seeing the beauty, right? Taking in the beauty, everybody. And, and really, um, I encourage my parting words to everybody is to um go out and you know get get grounded sorry it's a little choppy but i'm like can you see my feet dom <laughs> i see the feet <laughs> right I, I i i walk my talk those are papayas a lot of people have never seen papayas growing on a tree and uh this is a cinnamon tree right here and we're, the part of the cinnamon that we eat comes from the bark, and this is a young tree, but eventually the bark will um, uh, dries out and it curls up, and then they grind that bark to make cinnamon powder. And you've all had cinnamon sticks, right? And this oh, is a, yeah. this is a turmeric um, flower right there. So the turmeric, um, you 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 dig up the roots. And um, turmeric is a great anti-inflammatory uh, food, and it's medicine. And we all want to have eat our medicine, right? Instead of take it from a pharmaceutical company, you'd rather feed, the, pay the farmer now or the pharmaceutical company later. These are these beautiful orchids. Can you see those? Ah, there we go. Nature swag. You see them? And up there, there's bananas. Am I, I'm not losing you, am I? Oh, don't worry. You're not driving me crazy, even though I see bananas. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. I just want to make sure, make sure sometimes, sometimes it doesn't connect. But we have orchards here. You know, we have great grapefruit, lemons, limes, oranges, tangerines. And that's our, our Zen pond there. And uh, 
Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a beautiful world, and it, I got all this because Dom, you asked a question earlier. You know, I was an eco bohemian entrepreneur, so this is this is what you get for being good to the earth, kind to people, while you're running your business. You get you get successful, and I I didn't even have to make that much money. I just was smart how I invested my money. I never bought a new car in my life. Never bought a new house. Always buy my clothes used. Even now when I can afford it, you know. I never drank. My husband and I figured we probably saved a couple hundred thousand dollars in the last almost 40 years just never buying alcohol, cigarettes. Um, there's ways to make money by saving money, saving your, your changing your habits, changing your ways. And I think it's important for people to, to, to realize that. Um, am I living like the future matters when I make a choice? And if you want to live, you know, where there's horses in the pasture nearby, or even if you want to live in the city and you want to have a nice, comfortable apartment, figure out ways to conserve and preserve. That's what the Mother Earth needs us to do, right? Is we need to be more conservative and uh preserve the earth for future generations. And we do this by not um, abusing, abusing the resources, abusing the things we have. So if anybody wants to be a soul to soul entrepreneur, or learn how to, how to achieve this. And you know, this wasn't handed to me on a silver platter. I work for what I got to, for, you know, I, I would work, but see, you never work a day in your life when you're, um, when you love what you do. Sometimes I'd work seven days a week, 10, 15 hours a day at my restaurant. Um, but I loved what I was doing. I loved the people. I loved the food. I loved my community. You need in community, build your immunity. So find what you love to do and, and, and do, do, do the work. Show your love, show your heart. Share your good vibes. And if you want to be successful, hang around five people that are more successful than you. That's what they say. You want to be healthy, hang around people who are healthier than you. It's true. <laughs> you wrote that in your book, I think, somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is true. <laughs> you do. Right? You want to... You want to see more flowers in your life, hang around people who like flowers. Look at that bromeliad, huh? Look at that cactus. There you go. Yeah. So this is an avocado tree. If you look hard enough, you'll see some round balls hanging off the tree. Um, we got lots of avocados. Maybe ne some of you might never have seen a banana flower or banana rack. We dehydrate them. Um, we freeze them, we put them in smoothies, we bake with them. And if you guys um, come in to my Soul to Soul De-Stress Academy, where this membership community we're building out, you'll learn all kinds of, kinds of stuff. I want to show you one more thing, too. This is, I'm not losing you, am I, Dom? I'm still on Earth. You're good. <laughs> this is a noni tree. Um... Noni is one of the most uh, medicinal plants on earth, um, great for cancer. You can find noni juice at the health food store. Um, on the property, we have sweet potato, the pineapples. We, we, ha we plant uh, beautiful edibles and herbal formula. We, it's that diversity, right? We want diversity, diversity in our skin color, diversity in our religion. Diversity in our microbiome, diversity in our flower gardens. Where, when you have diversity, you have healthy communities. So we've got tomatoes in here, we've got basil in here, we've got flowers, we've got some ginger growing in here. This is beautiful. 
Those are my final words. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful world, Dom. It's a beautiful world. We just got to go find what's beautiful for each and, indiv- each and every one of us. Thanks a bunch for listening to this podcast episode. Hope you really enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe to this show if you haven't already because more greatness is coming your way. And if you're so inclined, be sure to share with at least three other people in your network so that way more folks can catch the fire that is on the Going North Podcast. Keep winning at life and advance others to advance yourself.